الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put me in charge of charity of Ramadan, meaning sadaqat, sadaqat al-fitr. Somebody came to me and began to take away some food stuff. I caught him and said, I must take you to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I am a needy man with a large family, and so I have a pressing need. I let him go. When I saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam next morning, he asked me, O oh, Abu Huraira, what did your captive do last night? I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, he complained of a pressing need in a big family. I felt pity for him, so I let him go. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he told you a lie and he will return. I was sure, according to the saying of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he would return. I waited for him. He sneaked up again and began to steal food stuff from the sadaqah. I caught him and said, I must take you to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, let go of me. I'm a needy man. I have to bear the expenses of a big family. I will not come back. So I took pity on him and let him go. I went at dawn to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who asked me, O oh, Abu Huraira, what did your captive do last night? I replied, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he complained of a pressing want and the burden of a big family. I took pity on him, and so I let him go. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, he told you a lie and he will return. That man came again to steal the food stuff. I arrested him and said, I must take you to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is the last of three times. You promised that you would not come again, but you did. He said, let go of me. I shall teach you some words which, which Allah may benefit you. I asked, what are those words? He replied, when you go to bed, recite Ayatul Kursi. For there will be a guardian appointed over you from Allah. And Satan will not be able to approach you till morning. So I let him go. Next morning, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me, what did your prisoner do last night? I answered, he promised to teach me some words, which he claimed will benefit me before Allah. So I let him go. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, What are those words that he taught you? I said, He told me, when you go to bed, recite Ayatul Kursi from the beginning to the end. Which means, Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but He, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what happens to them in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His kursi encompasses the heavens and the earth and preserving them does not fatigue him, and he is the most high, the most great. He added, by reciting it, there will be a guardian appointed over you from Allah who will protect you during the night, and Satan will not be able to come near you until morning. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily he has told you the truth, though he is a liar. O Abu Huraira, do you know with whom you were speaking for the last three nights? I said, No. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he was the shaitan, ruahu Bukhari. In this hadith, ahabatifillah, there are immense benefits that we can take from it. Some of the benefits that the ulama of Islam mention, for one is the greatness of ayatul kursi. So I want to encourage myself and encourage my brothers and sisters to read this very simple, uh, these simple ayat at night. And if you're able to do so, to memorize those ayat and recite them on your, on your bed. And this is due to the fact that it will protect the servant from evil. Another benefit of this hadith, and this is an immense benefit that the ulama emphasize and that we have to begin to emphasize and practice. 
This is Qabul al haq min maja'abi. And that is to accept the truth from wherever and whoever it comes. Because if it's the truth, it's more beloved to us, of course, than falsehood, and than the carrier of the message. Meaning that even if someone from Ahl Sunnah, someone who's beloved to you, has news, but it's a lie, or it's there's mistakes in it, or it contains some sort of deficiency. But someone who perhaps may be one of the devils from amongst mankind, but they come with the truth on this one occasion. You have to accept the truth because the truth is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow. And that's what Islam is, the haq. So we're ordered to follow the haq, even if it comes from the people of falsehood. So this is very imperative for us to understand that not everything, even when you're dealing with ahl bid'ah, and that we have to understand this, that when we say someone is a mubtadi'a, that doesn't mean everything with them is evil. But of course we don't praise them. We don't, if we're refuting someone, we don't praise them at the same time because then this will stick in the hearts of the people. But in fact, you're not going to mention their good at the same time while you are trying to warn the people from the harm they're bringing. And it lets us know what? That of course, that they have something of the truth, more than likely. Even Ahla Bida, from their various uh, types of Bida, more than likely, they have something of the truth. They believe in the Qur'an. They recite the Qur'an. They might bring you benefits from the Qur'an, benefits from the Sunnah, benefits from the Salaf. But then they may have bid'ah as well in their methodology in preaching and propagating Islam. Another benefit of this hadith, ahabitifillah, is that for us to know and understand that the shaitan and the shayateen perhaps may even come in the form of human human beings or they might come in the form of a dog or a snake or some animal and that the believer rest assured that the mu'min who is adhering to kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Nothing from the shayateen will harm him. So this is something you should rest assured. And that Allah protects his servants. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the servant is protecting himself with kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah for understanding those divine texts and striving to practice and avoiding kufr, shirk, and ma'asi as much as possible. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who adhere to kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.